Hey everyone, I wanted to show you a comparison between the original Xbox 360 controller and the new Xbox One controller. Just in case you've been stuck in the same situation that I was, where you've had this thing for years and, you know, it still works and you're wondering whether you should get the Xbox One controller, is it really worth the upgrade? Especially because of how freaking expensive this thing is. Uh, I paid about 60 euros for this, which is maybe 65, 70 dollars, which feels pretty absurd. I did a lot of research into non-name brand controllers, which are easily about half the price of this thing, uh, even with them still being wireless as well. But I kept running into the same thing, which is that they're very inconsistent. A lot of them have a pretty high failure rate, or they have issues with disconnecting if they're a wireless controller. Just a lot of issues that would make them pretty annoying to use. So even though they are a lot cheaper, I don't think the, on the surface, absurd seeming price of this thing is necessarily completely absurd. I think most of that money goes into having a pretty high quality standard so that things actually work in consistently. So first, let me show you the biggest reason why I wanted to upgrade from the original 360 controller. My biggest problem with it has come up when I've played Dark Souls 2 and 3. And the problem is the D-pad on the 360 is freaking awful. It's utter garbage. It's just this whole circle thing, and there's really nothing to stop you from doing diagonal directions. You can just kind of like mush it all around. And because of that mushiness and how imprecise it is, when I go to like switch items like, you know, switch from an Estus flask to something else, or switch my weapons or something like that in Dark Souls, what I've had happen a lot, all the time, through all of Dark Souls 2 and 3, is I go to press a button like this, go to press down or up or something, and it ends up pressing left, or right, or maybe diagonal, I'm not sure if that does anything in Dark Souls, but it presses something other than the one I want and just ends up switching the wrong item, and it's super annoying. It's just a big, mushy, imprecise, terrible D-pad. So that was priority number one. I just wanted a controller that actually had a good D-pad. And the Xbox One controller has exactly that. It's much upgraded. If you look at the two, this one is a big, mushy circle. And this one is a plus sign that actually is separated between the different directions. It's got a nice, clicky feel to it. It's not mushy. And if you press on one direction, because of the plus on either side kind of blocking it from moving, you can't, like, there's really no way to, like, turn it to a diagonal press or something like that when you've pressed it to one side. It's very decisive. If you pressed up, then it's only going to press up. Another reason I wasn't happy with this controller is that it's a bit... It's a bit, like, sticky and creaky and groany, and it just doesn't feel all that great to use. And I don't think that's so much an issue of it just being worn down, because any controller is going to wear down after a lot of use. But I've had this thing for maybe four or five years, and it's seen very light use. I mean, I use a controller for maybe one out of every four games that I play, roughly. I don't use it very often. Mostly for Dark Souls, and maybe some, like walking exploration type games where aiming's not too important, so I like the smooth movement of a controller. It has not seen that much use. One problem I have with this controller is that the thumbsticks have a zone where when you first start to move them, they're kind of sticky and slidey and hitchy. They don't move smoothly from their starting position. It's really hard to see. It's more of a thing that you can feel. But like, I'm pressing smoothly on it, and you see how it's not moving smoothly? It's like, ee, ee, ee. It's like, er, er, er. And it's the same with the other thumbstick. So it doesn't feel very smooth. Another issue I have is that the right trigger is very creaky. And my final issue is that this absolutely massive cord is pretty annoying. All this white stuff is a cord cover on it, by the way, to make sure that one of our cats doesn't eat the cords. But yeah, it's a very long and heavy cord. And I've always been someone who likes corded things more just because they tend to be quite a bit cheaper and more reliable. You know, you don't have to worry about any additional input lag from being wireless or disconnecting or battery power or anything like that. I certainly like the reliability, and even my mouse is still a wired mouse. I don't know if that's rare. Maybe most people have switched over to wireless. 
I feel like we've reached a point where technology has come far enough that if you get a pretty good quality component, like this instead of one of the much cheaper generic ones that has reliability issues, they tend to be pretty reliable. Even though it's wireless, as far as I can tell, there's no noticeable input lag at all. And changing the batteries once every, I don't know, 20 hours of use or so is really no big deal. I mean, 20 hours of use, that's 20 hours of playing a game. That's, <laughs> that's a lot. And I have rechargeable batteries, of course. So on the Xbox One controller, the thumbsticks are nice and smooth. They feel wonderful. These buttons don't creak at all. In fact, they don't make any noise whatsoever until you bottom out on them. They feel incredibly smooth. Even though this thing was pretty expensive, I do think it's worth it. And even though I haven't been playing games that need gamepads very recently, there is an upcoming game pretty soon that's reminiscent of Dark Souls that I think this controller will be good for.